So we mentioned it before Mass, this is the last weekend before we begin our new Mass schedule. And Father John and I will be serving fully all six of the parishes in our, our grouping. We're grateful for everybody's understanding and support as we all go through this transition. Our readings this weekend help us to really reflect on how to move from the way we've been used to things be in our immediate past and following him as his disciples now and for a future. So in the gospel, Jesus invites several people to follow him. But a number of them come up with excuses as to why they can't quite do it right now. Eventually, we'll get to that, Lord, but there's a few other things we need to take care of first. And for some of them, they're legitimate reasons, having to take care of their family, for example. But the point is, is that nothing, no matter how important, can take priority in our life before following God, doing His will. So Jesus says to them at the end of the Gospel, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. This analogy that Jesus is using makes us think that uh, Jesus himself knew of the possibility, even in that time, of cultivator blight. As a number of you may know more than myself, they, when cultivating the field, the, the tractor, you've got to keep it straight in those rows so that you ensure that you're uprooting the weeds and, and not the crop. Getting lost in daydream or always looking over your shoulder to see how things have been going um, you can get off track and destroy a swath of the precious corn. This, uh, an apt analogy is to how Jesus asks us to follow him. No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. If we spend all of our time looking back in our life, wishing for things to remain exactly the way they've always been, never paying attention to what we have to do now or in the future, then we can easily swerve off of the Lord's path, causing all kinds of destruction to our life, to others. So instead, we want to keep focus, facing forward, ahead to where we're going, what God's plan is for us, and ultimately, our final goal of heaven. To reach heaven, we will need to leave certain things behind. And part of this, this past that, that Jesus asks everybody to leave behind may involve conflicts or divisions that we may have, whether in between individuals, in our families, or even within communities, between parishes. These are all things that we need to let go to forgive and be forgiven. We see this in the Gospel. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, which is in the southern part of Israel. And in order to get there from the north, he has to go through the middle of the country, and that's through the area of Samaria. Jesus, it says, is, is rejected by the Samaritans as he goes through precisely because he's on his way to the south, to Judea and Jerusalem. In order to understand why this would be the case, it's important to know some of their backgrounds. You know, centuries before, uh, the Babylonians had actually come into Israel and taken a lot of people off into exile. And so the people living in Judah at Jesus' time in Jerusalem were people that were able to come back from Babylon and reestablish their country. But the Samaritans were a little bit different. Those were made up of the Jewish people who were able to stay, as well as mixed up and intermarried with other peoples, non-Jewish people, that the Babylonians had forced to move there to kind of keep everybody under control. And so they both were Jewish in background. They both worshiped the same God, though those in Judea centered around the temple in Jerusalem and those in Samaria, they had their own places to worship. But they really didn't have anything to do with each other. They weren't on friendly terms. And so that's why the Samaritans are going to reject Jesus because he's going to go down there south to those other people. And James and John, in their own part, 
They want to reject the Samaritans back and even call down fire upon them. But of course, Jesus is having none of it. He rebukes them for that idea. See, Jesus isn't interested in maintaining all that stuff from the past. He's come for healing, for the salvation of everyone. St. Paul reminds us in the second reading, too, that we are to love our neighbor as ourself. But he warns that if we go on biting and devouring one another, beware you are not consumed by one another. So it really goes right along with what Jesus says. No one who sets their hands to the plow and keeps looking behind. You're not going to be fit to be able to reach the future, the kingdom of God. Of course, it doesn't mean as Christians that we get rid of everything from our past. Certainly not. As Christians, we're all about our tradition. The fundamentals of our faith remain the same when other things may change. And God himself, who never changes, his love for us does not either. So our lives, we can think of, are like the tractor in the field. With God's help, our lives must be cultivated and grow. There's times when we might look away from him and end up tearing out some of the crop. But through the sacraments and prayer, the Lord can straighten us back out again, keep us on his path to heaven. Stay on the path. Keep in the right road. Grow the crop. Get rid of the weeds. Keep your eyes ahead on Jesus.